So you're probably wondering what this green thing is hanging off here with this curly wire. Basically what can happen is because you're running a wire braid hose and the machine's sitting on rubber wheels, you may need to earth the piece of equipment. So this alligator clip is designed to be placed onto a pre-cleaned piece of steel which is earthed, even a piece of pipe in the ground is adequate. As long as the contacts are clean and it's earthed onto the appropriate surface to ensure that you get a good earth. The whole reason we have uh, this earth strap is because us as humans generate static electricity, also too by pulling the trigger, some products will exacerbate uh, static electricity. So primarily what we do, because we're using products that uh, are times high in VOCs, we'll make sure we earth the piece of equipment to ensure that there is no sparking or static at the tip end of the gun. So that's what that earth strap is for. What I suggest you do is use it. So the airless gun and tip that we talked about before has the, has the capacity to inject me. So to give you an indication of just how powerful that is, this particular airless pump that we're using today for this top coat polyurethane, and this is very thin, what we've done is we've put a piece of meat on the wall up here to show you how easy this is to penetrate your skin. So say for example I was, I had that up against me or I bumped myself and I pulled the trigger, that's this sort of injection I'm talking about. So basically what that's done is that's gone way into that piece of meat. So that is the same configuration as your skin. So if I do it again, there you go, you see it's got a fester and then the paint is running out, fine, but there's also a significant amount of paint that's actually penetrated that piece of meat. So it fills it up, it loads it up with the hydraulic capacity of the material and of course it's shoved it straight into that piece of meat so this piece of meat guys is exactly the same as your skin so if you're not careful and you pull that trigger you can see here where how it's cascading out of the hole but as i push it more paint runs out that's exactly what will happen to you if you're not very 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 careful so the tip itself is a dangerous piece of equipment always put the safety on when you're not using it always keep it clean so we can see that the, the, the backing washer is sealing onto the tip appropriately and periodically during the day I'll always wash this. So now that we've got the safety on, we'll take the pressure off this because we're going to evacuate the paint that we've put in there. We're going to evacuate it out of the pump and r start running solvent through to do our flush or cleaning the equipment. So back the regulator off. And that exhausts out the top of the cap on the top of the diaphragm that's there. So as you can see there, there's no pressure on. So this is the one you want to operate, this one. Make sure you know what this one's doing. Never mind this one at the moment, this one here. So this is the air that comes through and the regulator determines how much air goes through to the air motor. So I've backed the regulator off. So now there's no pressure on the pump itself. So I now I can turn the air off while I work on it. But what do you think might still be a consequence of what we've just done? The air motor stopped, happy days. But remember what I said about this airless line? Because the pump stopped and stalled out, doesn't mean that the pressure's gone out of here. The pressure is still in this gun, look. I've stopped the air motor. Uh-oh. So I could have accidentally shot myself like we did here. Just like that. So remember, if the air motor has stopped, it doesn't mean that the fluid pump stopped, and it doesn't mean the fluid pump doesn't have any pressure. So with the safety on, I need to evacuate the pressure out of the line. How can I do that? Do I take the tip off and squirt it into a tin? Absolutely, I can do that. Or I can evacuate it with the valve down the bottom of the pump. So just to reiterate on that valve again, I'll wander around here. This is the dump valve. So remember, I primed this pump through the dump valve. So now what I can do is evacuate the pressure out of that dump valve if I wish, you, wish to, or evacuate the pressure out of here. So to give you an indication, safety on. I can undo the cap, because remember what I said, we don't flush, clean, rinse with the tip on. What we need to do is clean the tip and make sure that it's kept clean. So what I suggest you do is wash the tip up, the tip housing, keep it nice and clean. It's imperative that it's kept clean. 
So the right thinners for the right job is what you need to do. So by rinsing this off like this, we can inspect it as well to ensure there's no fatigue cracks in the body of the tip housing. And it gives us an opportunity too to inspect our tip. The only way you can t identify tip wear is by the way it sprays. You can't look at a tip with the naked eye here and say, oh, that's worn. The only way you'll establish wear from the tip is by actually pulling the trigger and atomizing material through the tip. <coughs> so yes, you would have the appropriate PPE gear on when washing this up because the solvents are quite volatile and also quite exacerbated in this temperature. So that's a primary rinse. So here's our gun and it's still got pressure in it. So remember what I said, I can evacuate the pressure out of the gun by again putting the gun in here and pulling the trigger or <coughs> I can evacuate the pressure out of this tap here. Just like that. Pays to put a piece of rag over there in case it does splash back at you. But with that valve open, now look at the gun. I can take the safety off the gun, pull the trigger. Happy days, no pressure. So I've released the pressure from this hydraulic pump. There's no air over the air motor. What do you think I need to do? Well, obviously, if I take too long, the product that's in this particular line will cross-link, cure, coalesce, dry, go hard, congeal, all of those things. So you'll notice from time to time that the lines do get warm. That is the product cross-linking in conjunction with the compression of the hydraulic reaction within this chamber, shoving it through a tiny little hole, and also to the exit, what we mentioned before, exothermic lines. So these lines now are becoming exothermic. That means they're generating heat, not only from the mechanical aspect of the product cross-linking, but also because we've shoved it in a tiny little hole. So if I spread it out, it'd become inert, it'd be slow to cross-link and cure. But because I've got it harnessed in a tiny little hole here, and that is the inner of this tube, it's got nowhere to go. So of course, when it's compressed, black hose draws, attracts the sun, the heat, it will tend to coalesce, cure in the line. So what I need to do is evacuate that paint out of the line. So to do that properly, what I need to do now is remove the suction hose from the material itself. Now you can see there's runoff here. So we'll just hold it up until it continues to, to drip out for a period of time. What you'll find with that valve open, it'll tend to run from here backwards a bit quicker because the air will come in and go back down that hole. So now it's important that we wash this as we go because remember, if you let that paint dry on there and you stick that in some new material tomorrow, some new paint, the solvents of the fresh product is enough to soften the existing dried film that you've got here. If you immerse that in new paint within the, dry, within the dry table, the drying table of the product you're utilizing. So there is a drying time, there is a recoat window, and there is also a softening period that you can re-soften that material that was left, the remnants is left on there. So it's imperative that all this is clean. So the only way you'll have trouble-free operation of airless pumps is by making sure that it's all kept incredibly clean. So remember what I said about the solvent I pumped into the drum that I kept? Well, that's my first rinse. So I'll put that in there. Now what I'm looking to do is suck the solvent up through there and now I need to get rid of the paint. Now I can't put the paint back in the tin, uh, in any other tin but the tin I was using because it's going to cure, it's starting to, to um, cross-link and harden. So to get the product out of the pump itself, what I'll do now is I'll close this valve. Now I'll reactivate the air into the pump, air motor pump itself, which is this one, the air motor pump. So I'll put my hand over the back there and open that valve. Have I got air on there? Yes, the line's taut. Now, with this open, I'm going to in a dirty drum. Notice I didn't put it in this area because when the pump actuates now with solvent, it's going to spray back at me. So what I need to do is put it in a hole that will contain it for me and, and won't cover me with paint. So remember what I said, if you were doing this on site, you would have a respirator on, your, all your spray gear on, and a pair of O-rules on, and of course the mandatory gloves and eye protection.
So with the trigger depressed, the pump's insolvent, the tap's turned off, you'll wind the regulator up to actuate the pump and start the solvent being sucked out of the drum through the machine to rinse it. So slowly turn the regulator <coughs> until you get the pump to actuate. Now it'll be sucking up solvent. So you can hear the air that we've, where we pulled it out, because remember it's airless. Now what we're doing is a rinse. So this solvent that I'm spraying in here now, I'm going to keep that overnight. So by keeping that solvent in there overnight, what happens is the volume of solids will settle to the bottom and I can tip that solvent off tomorrow morning. What I do tip off, I can save for my primary flush, which we're doing now. So we've got a primary and secondary flush for this pump. We can't just have one flush. It's not adequate enough to clear all the remnants of material, product, paint, out of this pump. So I know I've got thinners running through here. There's one other place I'd like to know that I've got thinners running through and to clear the capillary tube and to also clear the valve and stem and seat within this little valve here. So by opening this, here comes my solvent and it's opaque. So it's, it's still got remnants of the blue tinter in there, but also too, it's predominantly clear. So now that I've done a primary flush, two things I need to do. One is I need to get rid of the pressure again because I wish to check the filter in the gun and the filter in the pump. So because we're doing polyurethanes, it's imperative that we check these filters and there's nothing wrong with checking it halfway through the day for top coats because you're using a much finer filter. So say for example, if I was spraying epoxy, I'd be using a 60 mesh filter, nice big 220cc pump, adequate air motor to facilitate the pump and I, by using a, a bigger mesh filter that enables free flow of the material which is higher in volume solids predominantly. We try not to use solvent in those particular primers or intermediate coats and also too the filter itself needs to be checked periodically to ensure that there is no build up of contaminants within the line itself because that can cause a restriction and also create all sorts of problems as far as the spray application is concerned. So cleanliness is paramount as far as this equipment is concerned. Cleanliness is everything to ensure that its operation is something that happens every day. So we give our gun a bit of a rinse off because I keep these guns as clean as I possibly can so that I can ensure that it's easy to inspect, check for cracks, around the back of the barrel of the gun and the stem around through here so if it's dropped it can crack through there because it is cast so we make sure that we keep all this nice and clean the one thing to remember when you're doing this is the safety must be on to ensure that now I don't squirt myself with thinners or solvent so with the safety on give it a rinse safety still on give it a wipe that's how your gun should remain all the time, just like that. So if I was using a product that was drying quickly, I would have a wash pot nearby to periodically rinse all this to keep it clean. 